today I will focus on unit 4 okay unit 4 because next week you are going to present PMC report remember we keep on saying Minggu about week 4 you need to present your PMC report that is the uh, you it means that you have to report your your business planning this PMC reports stand for business model canvas. Okay, business model canvas report you can see in my slide business model canvas report is a planning actually it's a planning before you start your business you plan first what you want to do using this uh, model or, or canvas this is a way to help you to plan for your business so that you can uh, plan nicely and do it nicely okay let's look at what is business model canvas huh? in this unit we want to introduce to you what is bmc how it affects our business strategies and then you need to start to prepare one because next week you are going to present one bmc report or what you call PMC analysis should be a better word. PMC analysis for your practical activity. Okay, you, you have to pre prepare that. And remember, we have a simple format from you. This is something like this. All right, so the learning outcome is uh, you develop the skill to prepare this. Okay, so this is the whole models. The whole model with nine areas remember nine areas next week you have to present it one by one so what happened is later on you can go to the website to download this model or you can even draw it based on this picture you can draw it and then after that what you have to do is you analyze for example i will talk about this customer segment so uh, later uh, then you will decide who are the customers you want to uh you want to sell to them then you write in point form you prepare this and then you write in point form in a very simple format for example you want to sell to local uh people in kampong in your kampong or for example your target is online delivery for example uh customers who do on uh who are or you you are targeting ladies if you are for example you are selling beautiful skirt for example then you are targeting ladies then uh, your segment is ladies living in malaysia for example so very simple point you put very simple point here so this week i explained to you what you have to do next week you are going to present it uh the purpose of presenting it is i will from the presentation i will see how is your planning how is your planning? I will check whether you do it right or wrong. Then based on that, only you prepare your final, uh, not say final, your complete BMC report. So what you're going to present for next week is more of in a, in a terms of point form. You prepare it in terms of point form. And then I'll give you comments. This comment is to help you to improve so that when you, you prepare your BMC, it becomes much better. Your PMC report is much better, not not uh not something that a lot of mistake that I I have a problem also to give you marks. All right, so if you want to uh okay, if you might ask me how many to present. Let's say you have six or seven students in your group, you might have three or four students present this in the first presentation. So out of seven person, you might uh decide three of you to present or four of you to present this week and uh, those who didn't present in the first presentation next week then you have to present in the second presentation so it means that every one of you must have at least one opportunity to present either you present in the first or you present in the second presentation every one of you must present either in the first or in the second all right so the first one of course you present this one the final one you present the report so you you can arrange among your group members who want to present first who want to present the second one all right let's look at the bmc in more detail 
PMC is a business model canvas introduced by this person, Osterwerth, 2008. So this is a method to analyze, design, strategizing, and testing a business model based on the nine areas. So based on these nine areas, you try to analyze your business and decide what strategy you want to do or what plan you want to do for your own business. And this strategy are put on board so that the entire model can be seen at once, like go back to just now. So the first thing you have to do in your presentation uh, is you present, you tell me what you want to do. Of course, in simple, uh, what product you want to do, a little bit about your product, then you show me this. Okay, this in a big picture, in a big picture. Then only the next one, you will start to present one topic by topic. One topic by topic. So after you uh, do the whole thing, you can be able to see the, whether the strategies are related to each other. The most important thing is you want to see whether each strategies are related to each uh, the one another or not. And this is only nine areas. Some, some will have more areas to look at, but this is only nine areas and it covers most of the parts that you must look in. All right, so there are many areas, for example, value proposition in the middle. This is the most important area. So it shows you, you will tell me what value you want to offer for your customers. And then second, customer segmentation is somewhere here. Customer segmentation is you tell me who are the customers you target at. The most important, uh, most important customer you targeted at and uh, what are the characteristics of this group of customers. Third, marketing channels. Marketing channels explain how you dis determine our product to, to, to reach the customers. For example, are you going to sell it by post? Are you going to sell it to, uh, by runner? You get some runner, people help you to deliver. Are you going to deliver it yourself? Ah, or are you going to online delivery? If you are doing servicing, certain type of service, certain types of product, you can do it, uh, do online delivery, maybe. And, uh, then you have to decide uh, also how do other companies reach you? So these are about channels. Next, customer relationship, meaning that how do you build the relationship with the customers? How do you make, uh, keep a good relationship with the customers? And then number six, what are the key activities? How do we distribute our distribution channel and uh, whether these activities will help us to earn a lot of profit. And then next, key resources. Uh, for key resources, for key resources, you, sorry, uh, wrongly pressed. For key resources, remember you have to tell me who are the, uh, who are the important people working there, what are your role, how do you uh, divide your, your job, who will do the promotion, who will do the design, who will do the production, and who will do the delivery. So you have to decide what, uh, who are the person who do the things, and then how much money you have for your this project, and then uh, what are the skills and resources you have. Next, cost structure, about cost. What are the important uh, area or things that you have to pay cost? Okay, for example, do you need to pay rental if you are doing at home? You don't need rental. Do you need to pay electricity? Yeah, la, if you, you, you do a lot of things with electricity for your business, of course, you should pay at least a uh, few ringgit for the electricity you, that you use or the gas that you use, even though you use your own mother's gas, uh, your own house, uh, still you have to put it into your cost structure and your revenue. Revenue here, you tell me how, are you, uh, how much value customer will need to pay for 
for what do they currently pay, how much they pay. If you have a similar product in the market, how much they pay and how much you charge. Um, and then uh, how, how do they pay you? The last question will be, do you expect them to pay you cash or by other method like uh, such as e-wallet? So this in simple, we look at the nine areas, all right? So we look at area one, the most important area, this is the area in the center. The most important, value proposition. So value proposition is what differentiate you from your customers. That means, uh, in another word, I will ask you a question. What makes you better than your customer? Maybe you say your, your recipe is so special, well, your mother or your grandmother recipe is so special is uh, much more better than other people so make a product better delicious nice okay this is the value that you offer make you better than your competitors or you can say we have a better service uh, we have better first ways if you are doing something design i have better design than other people our service is better or our design better our food our products better okay all this will come out with a term value how much this is the value uh this is like uh, in malay we call it nilai apa yang pentingkan kepada pengguna what is good or important for the consumer and value is provided through value elements okay it can be something that new better performance customization customization means that you do this specially for your customers um for example you you are doing design or uh, advertisement or catalog let's say catalog you design this catalog special for a customer this is what goes customization doing this special for a customer reliability or oh, you can get the job done on time that is important also one problem that sometimes we are facing with online so uh, online purchase is there are complaints of course uh complaints that people pay money but they don't get the product or service that they pay for uh, that is the problem also so that's why uh, reliability is important the design, the brand, the cost, the co uh, the price, the cost, all these can be the value part that customers are looking for. So for customers, they will look at whether this will make them happy or not. And will that it help to solve their problems, make their job easier and so on. And of course, they don't want the, to face any pain. Eh? So... When we talk about value proposition, there are many, many propositions. There are about nine areas, nine value that we can offer to them. These two is part of it that is uh, commonly or uh, more people using this. First, unique selling proposition, meaning that your product is better. Okay? This is one method that people use out of the value proposition methods. There are many techniques. This is one, USP meaning that you sell product better than the competition competitor we call it unique selling proposition or fab feature advantage benefit that means your product have certain features that will help to address the product and then uh, provide new benefits based on the preference of the consumer this is also something that people are doing advantage and benefit certain advantage certain benefit that is uh, other people doesn't have or your custom your competitors doesn't have all right and there are many other ways uh we call it value for the customers for example soft problem uh, refer back to my example before this maybe you have solved the customer problems when they are facing uh this pandemic they have certain problems so you help them to solve the solve the problem is one value to the customer. Apa yang dipentingkan? Speed up the process, make it faster or easier. Innovation, something new. Cost reduction is maybe something that you can do. For example, uh, if you are selling in campus, of course, if you are selling in campus, then you can sell cheaper product for students. This is also some value. Itu nilai yang dipentingkan. Cost reduction means that cheaper products selling to the customers more efficient more efficient or effectiveness 
adding value menambah nilai so value here it can be you have the same product same price but i give you extra food for example let's say i'm selling uh, uh something okay uh uh chicken for example fried chicken then i add on uh, vegetables i add on potatoes that is common right then i also add on something that different from what you normally see maybe i add on a cookies rather than a uh, bread i add on cookies and then maybe i add on a candy all right something related like food adding value but for the same price i can if i have the 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 way to do it adding value i get a small cookie but same price or i add a candy but same price then people are more willing to buy from me because extra value and then to be different from other competitors this is also important to make it different from other competitors so that um, your product looks unique and different okay you need feature and convenience so you can choose based on this you choose either one as your main value not all huh? you can do everything at the same time only choose one choose one is good enough if you, let's say you say i want to have a nasi uh, uh, nasi goreng pesala uh, uh, sorry nasi goreng special special uh, then with extra then uh, cheaper then cost reduction or you nasi goreng special dengan ayam goreng then you add value but your price almost the same as, as the price katakan nasi goreng di, uh, di biasanya 8 ringgit you sell rambang ringgit but you add on two nuggets katakan okay you add on a little bit at value you can choose this one same price but at value or cheaper price same product or of course nasi lemak tak mungkin le, lebih convenient or effective so you might make it fast or i have a very fast delivery of course this one you must make sure you really able to achieve it or you have special taste special nasi lemak um, nasi goreng for example special one to be different from competitors so you choose either one next this is also very important and then when we do our bmc we must start with market segmentation always remember that huh? i repeat the first thing you prepare in your bmc analysis is you identify your market segmentation to market segmentation so it means that you identify your market segment what do you mean by market segment market segment refers to the people you want to sell or refers to your potential customer in simple refer to your potential customer so market segmentation is you decide who is your potential customers and you want to sell to them for example um you want to decide to sell to a group of people uh, near nearer to your kampong or nearer to where you stay now then because of this pandemic just because of this pandemic you can go out far you can go cannot go to other area other place so you want to to sell to your kampong people or your uh, nearby neighborhood then you select one geographical that means that your segment will be segment factor will be geographical factor geographical you choose geography so area you choose people in one area to sell the thing the things or the products all right so after you choose them then you explain who are they and what product they want that is geographical this is one method another method is you can choose another factor another factor to do market segmentation is demographic so you can say i want to sell this uh, let's say you have uh, some very beautiful hair clip or clip for a uh, clip that you can use everywhere pin or what very beautiful for young ladies then you choose demography demography pin uh, clips hair clips and pin for example for young ladies then demography is what you targeted at so demography you can either look at age 
gender and other relevant factors uh, in terms of demography so when you choose this that means you just choose demography okay you cannot choose all the factors together no you just choose either one of these five factors you have five factors to choose to choose one let's say i want to sell pin beautiful pin beautiful creeps hair creeps so on then i choose demography and then i choose lady so why i choose them that i explain a little bit because they like beautiful things they wear this blah 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 all right so they are my main target customer my main target potential customer also psychography so people who like to certain thing or certain characteristics maybe they prefer certain things they like certain things also you can choose that psychography or even behavior people like uh, for example you are selling t-shirt sport wear sport uh, t-shirt for sport so you have to target people who always go for sports so uh, people who always go for sport normally they are younger you still can say uh, i choose people who always go for sport because i want to sell t-shirt for uh sport they call sport way t-shirt for sport okay so but you can in simple so for this behavior then then only i explain who are these people with this behavior it's okay it's okay but you have to have identify one factor first then you can also choose social economy for example people with higher income they prefer this type of product so i sell to them or I, my product is a uh, Nazi uh, budget, uh, for example. My, my product is Nazi budget. So I, I'm targeting those with low income group. Okay, low income group. For example, uh, if you look at KFC, KFC is targeted mostly middle and low income group. Of course, they also target at the high income because even high income can, can go to eat at their place, but they target more on low and middle income group. How about um how about expensive product like uh for example uh we look at Pizza Hut more expensive and uh, more slightly more expensive so they are targeting on higher income group for example the middle income not the highest middle and high income group so we must know whether our product is suitable for the this group of people or not if we want to target at them so again i say when you do your bmc first you determine who are your customers and how to determine you choose either one of these factors to determine your customer after you determine your customer then only you can consider what value i want to offer them what product i want to sell them even though this is area two but this is the first thing that you determine then number three marketing channels when you look at marketing channels you look at how you deliver the product service to the end user or customers and the procedures to deliver the product or service so you will ask yourself ask this question first which channels work best how much do they cost for example if i have a store a uh, uh, boots whatever i can sell them this is directly face to face maybe it's a bit hard for you now okay then you can consider social media i sell it online and then i deliver myself or i get a runner to deliver for my for, for me okay and let's say you are selling near your neighborhood you drop biscuits yeah. and then you ask your neighbors your auntie your uncles your relatives whoever nearby uh, whether they want to buy a product using uh, facebook whatsapp website whatever method then after that you deliver them one by one so this is you can consider also using social media uh, channel then you sell it by yourself or another method is you sell it by post but bear in mind if you sell it by post what is your cost of using post office especially now during this time uh, i think post office they will say they will say uh, uh delivery things from uh, West Malaysia to Sabah will take a long, long time. If you check the news there, yeah? and 
also of course from Sabah to West Malaysia also will take a long long time so be very careful if you choose to use post radio maybe you send it in uh, November your customer can't even get your product by next year next January also they didn't receive your product because the product is being uh, sent by post radio that's a problem that's the cost not only the expensive but the, the time you have to spend on sending for example if you want to sell things in your neighborhood do you have cars how much your your cost of sending it if you have a small bike or your car that your parents can allow you to use then you pay the petrol is easier for you if you want to get a runner to help you to send it will be a problem remember that okay and then number four customer relationship is about how to maintain a good customer relationship with your customers how to build a connection with your customers so you ask yourself first question what relationship that the target customer expect you to establish how can you integrate that into your business in terms of cost and format so in in another word when you want to build this relationship how much is the cost you have to pay and how it affect your business for example you can offer uh, like a coupon for second purchase yeah you purchase the first product uh, uh, the normal price but the second product will have a five uh, 50 cent discount let's say coupon you provide them with coupon or you provide them with free samples or loyalty card and loyalty card is so popular now because we are trying to use loyalty card to help us to keep the customer with us help to keep the customer remain with us to be loyal customers and then discount warranty personal assistant or uh, what we call personal support like sometimes now you buy products you get support from online support you can ask the the, the seller uh, how to do this how to do that and for example uh, i buy a air fryer to fry the chicken uh, air fryer so electric equipment and then the the company who sell the air fryers they provide a website to help to show to provide me with recipe to use the air fryer so this is also something that we offer to the customers and customer will be more happy if we offer them extra things okay of course when things that you offer must be something that customer feel that are related and important and at the same time trying to make sure that the product is uh, not so expensive or the extra offer that you offer to them is not so expensive why do you want to keep this relationship because you want to increase the sales make the customer happy and return with your companies and let them be loyal with your products in another word they will continue to buy products from you this is the customer relationship and always remember when you prepare all this you need to pay a cost so you have to add the cost of providing coupon discount whatever in your cost structure there because when you provide coupons it means that you need to print photo sometimes you need to print something out the printing is a cost printing is a cost preparing the loyalty card or even the samples prepare a new website maybe it's a cost maybe it's not money cost but the time cost in terms of time cost in terms of your effort next key partners we talk about key partners are the network of suppliers and partners that the make the business model work so let's say you have six person in your group you are the uh what you call business owner okay so you six of you or seven of you in a group you are the business owner so you are not the key partners you can say i'm doing partnership uh, or uh, a kind of kerjasama lah, partnership but you are not the key partners key partner mean key partners mean outside the outside people who help to develop or re improve your business for example your suppliers workout for example even your parents your mother your grandmother help to give you the recipe also partners okay and then they help you to to teach you how to cook uh the right way reduce your risk of making loss 
Okay, sebab kalau masakan tu sedap, okay, you make more money, right? So they help you to reduce the risk. So they all even provide you with uh, tools, equipments for you to do cooking, for example. So the question you have to ask here is what key resources does your value proposition require? And then, for example, uh, if I want to pro provide a cheaper product, refer back to the number one, uh, area one, uh, if I want to prepare a cheaper value product, then what resources I need to provide a cheaper product? And who is your supplier, consultant, or key partners? Like I say, your grandmother, your mother, they provide you with the consultation. Uh, uh, they are your key partners, actually. Number six, key activities. Key activities refers to the activities that a company must do to make sure the company is working, the situation is working. For example, you uh, for a restaurant, the key activity, please refer here, cooking, cooking, receive order, cleaning, marketing, preparing ingredients. All these are for restaurant. Let's say if you are preparing for food for sale, preparing food for sale, you can refer this as your example, activities. And website company, Company providing uh, online services, for example, website design, marketing, coding, and so on. Beauty products, then packaging, branding, marketing, and so on. So these are examples. And when you do key activities, you just ask yourself, okay, what should I do? Or uh, what do I need to do before preparing product? Okay, if you need to prepare the product, so what? Should I do prepare before preparing product? What should I do when I prepare product and when I do the selling? What should I do? Okay, and what should I do after I prepare or after I sell the products? So you can ask yourself. For example, if you are doing a uh, software, uh, preparing something, uh, then you have to think: What do I need to prepare before, during, and after? Before sales, during the sale, and after the sale. Then number seven, key resources. In this area, we talk about what are the assets we need to, to, to develop our products and to sell our product. So we will ask the question, what resources are important and uh, most required in the distribution channel, customer relationship, and Revenue stream, for example, capital. Capital refer to modal. Huh? Modal. Uh, how much money I need to start my business, for example. Human talent, that means your ability, your skills. Your skills, your ability, kemajuan dan kebolehan. Okay, knowledge. Uh, also, if, if you talk about you need to do promotion, you need to know how to design your Poster, ah, uh, your catalog, all these are talent, okay, human skills and ability. Distribution, let's say um, some of your members will do the distribution, then they, do they have the transportation? If they have to get a bus to, dis to deliver, it will be a big problem, okay, when you are delivering in a, not a city area. Rural area, hard to dis distribute. Business partner, okay, the, who are or some business partner provide you with resources, pattern or recipe, like I keep on saying recipe and networking. These are your resources. The networking you have through your Facebook, through your Instagram, all will help you. So you need to ask yourself what are the resources and uh, you need for every part of it. Number eight, the cost structure. Now you have to ask yourself, what are the most uh, highest costs? What are the highest costs in your business and which cost, which activities, resources are the most expensive? So you uh, you ask yourself, do I need to pay salary or wages? Let's say your mother helped you to cook. Do you need to pay at least some salary or wages to your parents, your mother? Who can help you to do the cooking, rental and utilities, electricity, gas, water, and so on, machine or equipment, 
cost per unit. This is very, very important that you must include. Um, next week, you need to prepare like you, you have some ideas already about the cost. Although it's not very detailed, but at least you have an idea how much you have to pay for the product or service uh, that you provided. Let's say if I want to sell this product or service, how, what is the cost per unit? You must start to think about it and do a little bit of research on the cost of uh, similar product in the market. And marketing and operation costs, for example, cost to prepare poster also. It might be a cost. And last, revenue stream. It represents the cash that a company generates from each customer or product. So an entrepreneur has to strategize and modify his product or service to create attractive values for target customers. So we ask, for what value are your customers willing to pay? First thing, we want to ask how much customer willing to pay? How, what and how they recently pay? Is it cash, uh, e-wallet, cash on delivery, credit card, and so on? Or, and how much does every revenue stream contribute to the overall revenue? So in another word, how do you get the money? For example, you're selling the products, you get the return, uh, the, the sales revenue from selling the products. But at the same time, if you do uh, delivery, sometimes you get a return from delivery, meaning that you charge them delivery charges. Let's say I charge them three ringgit, but my cost of delivery only one, two ringgit. So I still earn, right? So that is your revenue. And then also you have, can have other events. Okay, for example, uh, McDonald's, uh, they, they are event organizer. So if they become event organizer, uh, they, uh, organize the event, then they can earn profit also from that. Okay, so these are the nine areas. You can get the template from here, uh, from the Synergize company, where is the name? Yeah, I think they did it. Uh, you can search online for the template, but also you can draw it yourself because the template is just so simple. Okay, and then in summary, this business model canvas can be accepted and used widely for developing business strategies and done by uh, both by setting up business as well as to establish a very large corporations, large company. And this means business model canvas is to help you to learn how to work out an effective business strategy is in a systematically orderly and comprehensive manner. So let's refer back to the first one. So we go back to the slide number four. Oh, yes. Okay, remember again, I feel saying next week you need to prepare this. And let me explain a little bit. So when you do your presentation, the first thing you have to do is of course uh, you you tell me what products you want to sell. Okay, tell me what products you want to sell first. And then tell me a little bit about the uniqueness of the product that you want to sell. What products? Uh, the uniqueness of the product that you you need to, you want to sell. Uh, for example, if you want to sell this food, if you want to sell the food, what product? Uh, how? Why do you want to sell it? That's one. Then the second thing is you you show me this model canvas the big picture of it you show me the whole picture then not empty but with point so for example customer segmentation you choose young lady okay then what value you pre prepare for them always remember this is connected connected so when i look at this i see value okay value is beautiful nice and uh uh that's what they think. And then how to connect the relationship. How do you build the relationship between value and customer segment? That is with uh, you give them voucher, coupon and so on. And, and, and then at the same time, the channel is how do you develop, uh, produce a product and send to the customers? From the product to the customers. So this is the channel. And then at the same time here, the key partners, people who help you to do your business, right? Point list down, 
in point form, okay? And then how this key partners uh, might affect your activity. So it's related. And how these activities and resources, both of these two, help you to prepare your product for sale. So these two are related with this also. And I would say all are related. So key activities, key resources means that you have costs. You need to pay costs. And then customer segment and value contribute to revenue. This is the revenue. So in the second page, you present this to me. And then after that, you start to present part by part. Every area have to explain with one slide in a little bit more detail. You can prepare a slide in point form also with a little bit more details, but uh, this is the way you have to prepare. Okay, if you look at your... If you look at the Google, uh, my classroom, yeah, I want to show you. My classroom in the course outline. In the course outline, there is a detailed explanation about this. Let me. This is the week four, huh? so okay, let me change the slide. I stop the presentation of this slide. And then I want to present my the outline. This is the one. Yeah. Sorry, I redo it. Okay, this is the uh, uh, you can refer to page seven. Page seven in the content. Okay, so for the business model canvas. Page seven in the course outline, business model canvas altogether is 30%. So the presentation of business model canvas draft report, like what I tell you what to present, is 15%. 15%. Um, sorry, can you see the course online? Anyone? Uh, answer in chat, can you see the yes, sir? Okay. I'm not so sure whether you can see it or not. Okay, yes, sir. All right. Let's go back here. So you can see here in the draft, uh, the the outline the outline you have your presentation will be fifteen percent your written report also fifteen percent so your presentation is to present a creative and innovative business idea ah this is the objective so make sure your product will be creative and innovative and then when you write the final report you have to describe a new startup business strategy plan so when you present you can present it in point form. But you know what you are doing, okay? You know what is your you are doing. When you write the PNC report, you must write it in more detail, more detail. Huh? So the suggested content. Let's go here. Okay, the so content here first. Number one, what is the type of your business practicum? That means that you tell me what product you are doing in what industry. Number two. What industry? What product in what industry? And 
uh, if you have more than one product, then you choose one or two. Okay. So what type of business you can tell me either you are doing selling products or you are doing kit economy or you are doing other method. You are provide doing digitalized surround. Okay. Digitalize the business or what. So you have to tell me first. Tell me first what you are doing. Okay. And if you are selling product, what product you sell? Okay. In what industry? Okay, how do you identify this business idea? You can explain a little bit. This one, one, two, three, four, I explain. I need you to explain very simple in uh, only in the first slide. A little bit only. First slide. For example, uh, you are doing selling of food and beverage. Okay, uh, what food and what beverage? So in two sentences, you can complete that. And how do you identify, like I say? Are you trying to solve problems or you are making it more convenient for the customers? Okay, or what is your other reason of doing that? Don't tell me you are doing for practical project. I know that you are doing it for APK. I know, okay, but you have to explain it if you are a businessman. Why do you do that? That's the, the thing, okay? And then next, who is in your company? In another word, you can do it, uh, you can explain who are the uh, GM, general manager, who are the marketing manager, who are the production manager, who are the uh, pro uh, marketing promotion, uh, I'm sorry, marketing promotion, the same thing, uh, production, marketing, okay, transport, or, or what you call a delivery, transport delivery, and um, account, okay, decide who is doing what. So it means that besides you do your PMC, you also have to determine your 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 job, lah, your job, what you have to do in this. For example, if you are doing production, then you focus on your producing the products, then your other friends will do the promotion for you. And your another friend will help you to do the delivery or uh, your friend will help you to do the purchasing and delivery, for example. Okay, and another friend might help you to do a uh, packaging and other things. And then, this is the most important, number five. The nine business model canvas area. Let's like say you present one in a big picture, then you expand one by one. Okay, then you have another slide to expand each one of it. And then another number seven is very important. What are the risks? Tell me, what do you think? What are the risks of uh, your product? Is it uh if you talk about food, is it food poisoning? Uh, maybe is, is that your risk and think? And last, your conclusion. Okay, of course, you can have a reference and appendix. If you want to add in photo and survey, this is more for your report. Okay, for your PowerPoint presentation, I expect until 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 only. The conclusion, if you have backup plan, contingency plan, this is the conclusion. So the presentation will be 10 minutes. I will arrange the time for presentation next week. But I want to ask, uh, do you, uh, before I arrange the time, huh? I want to arrange for next week, because I have about nine, uh, nine groups, nine group, nine group for you guys. So I want to know, how many of you have a class at the, around 10, 30, 10? Do you have class at 10? If you have class at 10, you let me know, yes. If, if you don't have class at 10, then I, I, have, I will arrange my uh, presentation from 10. Oh, uh, I think most of you have class at 10, yes. Yes, got class at 10 also. Then I will start at 11, 11. Can I... Uh, if I cannot finish, can I continue until 2 or 3 p.m.? Can I continue? Now the second question. Can I continue until 2 or 3 p.m.? I uh, got left from one time. Sorry. 2 to 4. Okay. So can I, I just continue until 1.30 then? 
Okay, I'll try to. So I need your help. Okay, I need your help because if I have time from 10 to 2, then it's okay. But if you have class at 2, then I will start from 11 to 1.30. Okay, prepare, prepare, prepare. I have 11 to 1.30. So I try to finish it before 2. Okay, but I need your help. I need your help. You see, uh, if I have nine groups, each group or you test 15 minutes, then uh, it will be more than two hours maybe already. So I need your help to make sure you get ready. Yes, you must do live presentation. Live presentation because if you want to record a video and send to me, you have to send to me before next Monday. You have to send to me before next Monday, and I always prefer live presentation. Okay, for presentation, I always prefer live presentation. It is okay if you cannot attend the class sometimes because of some internet problem. So that's why I say, but for live presentation, I need you to attend because I really want to see who is, uh, who is there, <laughs> who is in my class. <laughs> Most of the time, I only see some of your face, huh? so I need a time presentation. Uh, can we present a pre-recorded video during the live presentation? Uh, okay. Why do you want to, if you are already in the live presentation, why do you need to do pre-recorded video? Uh, Dennis, sorry. What to ask you, if you're already in the presentation, you already uh, present, present, you are present. Kamu sudah ada, ba? Kenapa mau pre-recorded? <laughs> okay, so that is the reason why, why, uh, why I, uh, why, why I say, I would say live presentation, huh? Because live presentation is for really for those, for those who have big problem who really cannot attend any presentation at all okay so like a pre-recorded video only i keep it for the uh, second presentation because okay and okay so for this one the first presentation i think out of six or seven of you at least two to three of you have a better connection and you can present so two uh, three to four of you prepare to present during the presentation three to four of you but please your other friends um, your other friends please also prepare prepare to help out if your your suddenly one friend who are supposed to present cannot present okay if one of them cannot present then your other friend have to start to um help out to present okay is it okay it's okay because only three to four of you to present on the spot any any answer three to four of you to present at the spot only but of course if the whole group have problem cannot present on that time then uh because of internet problem then i accept you do the recording video after that but i hope that you will try to record it uh, uh sorry try to present on spot first okay i hope you can try to present on spot and then so that after that you you don't have problems because if you present on spot i will give you comments that is the most important thing I will give you comments and then this comment will help you to improve your report. Remember, your next report is 10 pages report, huh? excluding, excluding cover reference and appendix, excluding cover reference and appendix. Another three weeks, that means by 27 November, you have to submit it. And please use a PDF to submit. And we recommend you to post like PMC report, section number, group number, and PDF. At least you put your uh, it in PDF. Easier for me to read. Um, if you put it in Microsoft Word, I worry I cannot open. Sometimes 
due to unknown reason my computer cannot open so please prepare in pdf and for powerpoint slide remember you have to prepare the powerpoint slide also how many slides depends but remember you have all these to prepare and nine areas so me minimum 10 pages for your slide as far as you prepare number one to number eight reference no need appendix no need that is for your final report okay before we uh, stop any questions any questions for this group uh, for for your uh, presentation Yeah. Okay, really no one. Huh? All right. Uh, 